Sir Julius says somebody's out to get PPP. Residents benefit from settlement to suburb upgrade. And Morabe fans flock to NCD for football grand final. Thanks for joining us. This is Friday's News. I'm Charmaine Poreambe. While the minor reshuffle of cabinet took place last week, the ripple effect on party coalition ties are starting to show. In an exclusive interview, New Island Governor and People's Progress Party leader Sir Julius Chan expressed concerns on the Marape Basel government following the reshuffle. PPP lost a ministry in the recent minor reshuffle that had seen the National Alliance Party gain the tourism ministry. PNG politics known for its own unwritten rules. But party coalition traditions the same as any Westminster government system. Party promises and ministerial portfolios distributed to members of parliament that represents the coalition ties in government. System to the fact that uh, to find party balance there needs to be a distribution of ministry that respects uh, one ministry to be allocated to three ministers per party uh, ministry sharing ratio. Uh, these two fine gentlemen had to vacate their spot in cabinet that made way for the ascension of the member for Namatanai. However, the longest serving politician in PNG politics not taking it lightly, referring to the recent minor reshuffle which saw a member of his party lose a portfolio. To lose a ministry to a junior uh, officer, the, uh, the politician, I I just cannot equate justification on that. So, yes, I am disappointed because we were promised that we would keep three ministries. We lost two. We lost Mr. Isifu at the time of transition, and now we lost uh, Mr. Tamo for doing nothing wrong. The replacement of Tourism Minister Emil Tamur with National Alliance member Walter Schnobelt bringing up existing party rivalries in the New Guinea Islands region between PPP and National Alliance. So we are solidly part of this government, but the recent action by the Prime Minister to demote the PPP for whatever reason, I don't know, but it's very clear uh, someone is out to kill PPP, and particularly in New Island. I welcome the fact that we are a very small province and have two ministers, you know, but uh, what is the reason behind it? I will leave that to, for you to guess. Except for Governor Sir Julius, both tourism and treasury ministers are New Island MPs representing KBN and Namatanai Open Seat, and both are members of the National Alliance Party. Firstly, I would like to thank the Marape Basel government for the trust they have in National Alliance Party and in appointing me as one of the MPs within the party uh, this new portfolio. And uh, I'm sure being so close to me back in New Island province, um, um, I'm going to hear a lot from you on some of the um, uh, fiscal requirements. Uh, and I can see, um, I can see, I'm going to be under some some pressures in in coming weeks. Now both the ministers, after Emil Tamur, a member of PPP, was removed, causing Sir Julius to question coalition ties, as he says the minority parties played a huge role when the government changed hands last year. Plus one vote counted at that time a year ago, and it was PPP that played a pivotal role in convincing the then Prime Minister that in the interest of good governance and stability of the country that probably it would have been best for him to step aside, which he did. Now how do you equate that with a three to one ratio? We have contacted Prime Minister James Marbot to comment on Sir Jay's concern and we are yet to receive a response. Adelaide Sorokskari, National, MTV News.
counting for the Goroka open by election is nearing completion as the counting heads into the final eliminations with just four candidates remaining in the race as of this morning. Elijah Gumaya was eliminated in the 18th elimination this morning and his votes distributed as counting continues in Goroka. Pango candidate Ayatambo maintains the lead at 18,600 rather 869 votes, followed by Bire Kimi Sopo at 18,315 votes, and sitting member and PNC candidate Henry Ame running in the third place with 15,873 votes. And trailing in the fourth place is Jeffrey Sasuwo with 12,417 votes. Returning officer Ikiso Kosanama says they hope to make a declaration hopefully tomorrow. The National Capital District Commission today started allocating land to residents of Nine Mile Quarry under the Settlement to Suburb Upgrade Program. The program was launched in July by Prime Minister James Marape and after almost two months, the program got off the ground today. The NCDC Settlement to Suburb Program at Nine Mile Quarry is not a dream anymore. Block allocation to residents started today. Residents who have already been allocated land in this process. Now have a week to remove their structures and relocate to their new piece of land. Each block of land measures 10 meters by 30 meters. The process to properly attain title for this settlement started back in 2014, following widespread eviction and demolition exercises, which took place in different parts of the city, including Arima in second settlers formed an association, called it the Nine Mile Rona Quarry Association, and used this as a mouthpiece to advance this agenda. The result? They are now ready to own blocks of land thanks to NCDC. Now we see that uh, the surveys here actually allocating the land to the block holders. We are very happy that uh, uh, we are, we will be fortunate to get the land uh, from the state. We are here now because of cooperation, working together. Otherwise, we would have been like other settlers. Happy residents couldn't contain their emotions. Honorable Pastor Paco Ben Mogim Biklo Wokna, now I'm allocating. Again, Granny Gam Gam now, now I'm Kamla Re, now I'm Black Sim Title. Long time was him. All come Browsum was something at Slarines and Blatting all and up Camp again, but all Camp again, I'll look at me plan and Mila talk thank you. Governor and all group long and one time, Savian all and said this line. Because we've this love bless you, I know a title where we've left stuff. Now give me a settlement to Sopepe, and we've one bell, also we've I'm kissing like grand. Because of the cost involved in developing this land, NCDC has asked for each block holder to pay 40,000 kina over a period of 15 years. The requirement is to pay 10% of this upfront by the end of the year, and the rest can be completed over 15 years. Many residents have not opposed this idea, saying it was for a good cause and expressed willingness to pay this. Ruth Rongola, National MTV News. It's no secret that the Papua New Guinea constabulary has been underfunded for many years. Police Commissioner David Manning calling for more adequate funding into the force during the opening of the Waigani Station of Excellence yesterday. Rayon Lakingu reports. Commissioner David Manning says the constabulary needs an estimated total of 3.1 million kina to help support the constabulary. This comes after a study revealed that the constabulary has been underfunded for many years. To the RPNGC, amongst many findings, the, the study had confirmed that the RPNGC has been underfunded and has been all these years. The study had revealed that the RPNGC requires a one-off funding of approximately 3.9 billion over a specified period of time to ensure that it is appropriately trained and provided with the required infrastructure and resources. The Waigani Station of Excellence, which was opened yesterday, is part of government's reform in the constabulary. It aims to provide confidence in the force and to provide effective policing in communities. But to provide better policing, more training is needed, and the police must be equipped with resources to do their job effectively, and adequate funding must be provided. Going forward, adequate budgetary funding must be allocated to the RP RPNGC to sustain its operations nationwide. I know this is possible because we have the political leadership and the political will, as well as our much, much valued assistance from our international partners who are committed to building a better RPNGC. 
A better RPAGC, I might add, is what our communities deserve and quite frankly are demanding for. The Commissioner further highlighted the need for better policing methods to ensure better policing environment, adding that there are many areas that need major reforms to ensure there is public-private partnership. Well, I've just instigated a process that will see investigations being undertaken, investigations being undertaken in collaboration with partners in both public and private sector. The reliance on policing agencies across the world to solve community issues on their own is changing. The truth is, police cannot do this alone. But together we can. To ensure welfare issues of police officers are addressed, better housing scheme for police officers will be provided. Under the policy directives of the government, they have committed to initiate a retirement benefit scheme for police. The executive of the RPDC on policy direction of the Maribay government have commenced to initiate a retirement benefit scheme for the first 20 eligible retirees who have served diligently within their communities and have demonstrated the required attributes of the constabulary. On the welfare issues, in particular housing, I've made my intentions clear to our super fund managers that we demand a housing scheme for members of the conservatory, and this is not negotiable. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. The ousted executive director for the East New Britain Development Corporation, Isaac Minikas, has been reinstated by the National Court in Kokopo. Mr. Minikas was terminated two weeks ago by East New Britain Governor Nakikus Konga after failing to comply with certain regulations of the company. Governor Konga, who represented the East New Britain Provincial Government as the proxy shareholder, said the company under the leadership of Minikas failed to make profit for the province. Meanwhile, Mr. Mr. Minikas claims the procedure involved in his termination was not legitimate. He was appointed as the new director in 2018 to head the company following the, a reshuffle of the previous management. He was tasked to clear outstanding debts created by the previous management and make profit for the company. He said Governor Congo was too quick to demand profit when the company is still repaying debts created by the past management. This is MTV National News. We'll be back with more stories after the break. Welcome back to the news. Students at the University of Natural Resources and Environment have gone into a sit-in protest since yesterday after the university's administration failed to produce their semester one results. SRC President Polus Kikitam told MTV News that although the second semester has started, they still haven't received their semester one transcripts. Mr. Kiki Tam says they need the semester one results as it will determine if they will continue or discontinue their studies. He says some of the students have paid their tuition fees for the second semester only to find out they have been discontinued. Yesterday, the student body stayed away from classes and demanded the university's administration produce their semester one results. The SRC president says the failure to produce their transcripts is one of the many issues prompting the sit in protest. With the aim of improving access to water and sanitation, member for Maprik John Simon presented five 4,000 litre tanks to Maprik Secondary School. This will enable the school to have access to clean water and use the ablution facility that has been abandoned for a year. Through the Maprik District Development Authority, 18,000 kina was used to purchase the tanks and septic pipes. The new pipes will be used to replace the old pipes in the school's sewage system, while the tanks to store water to be used for the toilets and hand washing. The school sewage system had been out of order for a year. Students were forced to use pit toilets. That won't be the case anymore with the district's intervention. Three of the tanks will be installed for the girls' ablution block while two for the boys. Agriculture Minister and Maprik MP John Simon when presenting the tanks said health and hygiene is an important part of students learning and it was only appropriate that the district step in to assist. Meanwhile according to the Washington schools policy 2018 to 2023 51 percent of schools in PNG have access to water while only 28 percent have access to sanitation. 
UNICEF reports that while Papua New Guinea has made progress in improving access to clean water and sanitation facilities, there is still much work to be done. Adolescent girls in schools suffer the most, with only 8% of schools practicing menstrual hygiene management and only 10% of schools promote hand washing with soap. Many schools report absenteeism among adolescent girls due to lack of clean private changing rooms with without access to soap, water and sanitary pads. Some stay away from school for a few days. This hampers girls' learning, they miss classes and they attend classes with reduced self-esteem and dignity. UNICEF stresses that clean water, basic toilets and good hygiene practices are essential for the survival and development of women and children. The United Nations has opened coordination offices in Mendi and Tari. The new office in Mendi was opened by UN Resident Coordinator Gianluca Rampola and UNDP Resident Representative Dek Wajna along with country reps from the Food and Agriculture Organization, International Organization for Migration and UN Women. The United Nations has set up office in areas the organization was involved in during the earthquake relief in 2018. Deputy Provincial Administrators Simon Fabic and Henry Happen joined the delegation at the new office opening. The provincial administrations have recognized the need for building partnerships with local authorities in Southern Highlands and Hela. This is to allow for the implementation of the Highlands Joint Program and other UN activities through development initiatives. Apart for the Mendi and Tari offices, the United Nations has offices in Port Moresby and Boca. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0.2860 US dollars in the interbank market this morning. At Bank South Pacific, the Kina is buying 0.2785 US dollars, 0.3863 Australian dollars, 0.4204 New Zealand dollars, and 28.86 Japanese yen. Looking at the commodity prices at New York Close, Gold is trading lower, coffee, cocoa and copper closed higher, crude oil is trading higher, palm oil and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed unchanged, the ASX 200 is trading higher and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. When we return, we bring you news making headlines overseas. Welcome back to the news. Laloki Psychiatric Hospital has been commemorating World Mental Day this week. The hospital's health officers conducted awareness on alcohol and substance abuse in their surrounding communities with this year's aim of the mental health campaign to increase investment into mental health. Meanwhile, tomorrow will be the official day of the event in which the psychiatric hospital will be hosting an open day. Staff of Laloki Psychiatric Hospital and residents living near the hospital gathered this morning to commemorate the World Mental Health Day. This celebration comes at a time when our daily lives are greatly affected as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mental health is everybody's human rights and it is time that mental health is available for us everywhere and anywhere at any time within our nation, Papua New Guinea. These past couple of months have brought with them many challenges. For those in the health sector, providing care in hard circumstances, even the fear of going to work and bringing COVID-19 home, and for students having to adapt to home and online classes with little contact with teachers and friends. For workers, some have lost their jobs and the economic struggle is starting to reflect on its citizens. It is evident that the need for mental health and psychosocial support will increase in the coming months and years. Exactly the one in something and causes mental health problem, start fighting it early the better. Okay? So if every family decides to put brain as their greater investment and the quality of the brain as a greater investment 
I'm sure what a wonderful world it will be and what a wonderful Papua New Guinea it will be. This year's theme, mental health for all, greater investment, greater access for everyone everywhere, aims to raise an increased awareness on mental health, to promote good mental health and prevent mental illness. Every one of us can make a contribution to ensure people dealing with mental health problems can live better lives with dignity. Mental health matters. Lilian Sopera Kenea, National MTV News, Laloki. And now turning abroad to the U.S., it was debate day again for candidates in the U.S. election, but this time it was the vice presidential nominees going head to head. But before Kamala Harris and Mike Pence were taken to the stage, President Donald Trump was once again grabbing attention. The great American debates have so far brought us a shouting match between the two men vying for the position of most powerful. Will you shut up, man? Listen, a fly on the head of the vice president. To the men and women who serve in law enforcement. And a sellout of 35,000 fly swatters purchased by Biden supporters. But the next presidential debate is promising to be the most bizarre, a one-man show. I'll be there, and in fact, if he shows up, fine. If he doesn't, fine. Due to Trump's diagnosis, the debate commission ruled today that next week's debate will be run online. The president immediately dialing Fox News to RSVP. No, I'm not going to waste my time on a virtual debate. That's not what debating's all about. You sit behind a computer and do a debate. It's ridiculous. After being restricted to a Twitter trail of campaigning... My favourite people in the world. The COVID-carrying president now has grand plans to instead spend his debate day holding a rally. Even though his doctor says he's not clear of the virus, Trump says he's cured. I don't think I'm contagious at all. And remember this, when you catch it, you get better, and then you're immune. His erratic behaviour has prompted House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to announce a commission to review his fitness for office. His disassociation from reality would be funny if it weren't so deadly. It comes as new case numbers rise in 31 states across the country, Wisconsin recording its worst day yet. With thousands of people fighting a virus, the president is daring them to dismiss. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer has been attempting to stamp out the virus with strict shutdown measures in her state. But her efforts have been labelled tyrannical by some, and today the FBI foiled an alleged plot to kidnap her. The alleged conspirators are extremists who undertook a plot to kidnap a sitting governor. Whitmer pointing blame at the president for stoking distrust. And giving comfort to those who spread fear and hatred. Trump, though, was back pushing his message on Fox tonight and only apologizing for the coughing. Because absentee ballots... <coughs> Excuse me. At one point, his voice gave way completely. I think the first debate, <coughs> they... Yeah, Excuse me. But debate or no debate, cured or not cured, Trump continues to find ways to be heard. And to the Antarctic, here's a look at sea ice algae critical to the Antarctic ecosystem. It is threatened by climate change and parts of dealing with that challenge is the initial difficulty in simply figuring out how much algae exists. There's another side to Antarctica, but you'll need to go upside down to see it. Golden grasses spread across the underside of the sea ice. These algal masses help sustain the southern ecosystem, but they're hard to quantify. So traditionally, survey and mapping of the Earth's surface is conducted from, from satellites, from aerial surveys. But one of the challenges of working with sea ice is that none of these traditional techniques are going to work. Well, this is a classic way of accessing algae under the ice here in Antarctica. But one core is a fraction of the some 20 million square kilometres of sea ice around us. But this season, the scientists here are trialling new technologies to make this sampling area much larger. 
So a hyperspectral imaging system, rather than just using the red, green and blue like we use with our eyesight or in a traditional camera, allows us to open up around 170 um, bands within the visible light spectrum that are available to us to be able to create a new image. It's the first time such a system has been used in polar waters, so the scientists are writing the handbook as they go. So the engineering challenge was being able to get this hyperspectral payload, um, which creates a single line of pixels that scans underneath the ice to be able to be moved. They've built an underwater cable car. It's got a pulley system running a 30 metre cable along the ice. The camera is then fixed to a pair of skis and flipped over to face the algae. This is one of the swaths that the system has come. These swaths are highly dense with information. Ice core samples are still taken and are an important tool, but pixel by pixel, they're now building a map to a golden world below. And to take us to Trukai Sports, Moraba province is known for a lot of things, rainy weather, good food and yes, they love their football. When it comes to football, the province prides itself in having some of the best players and fans. Moraba diehard soccer fans in Port Moresby are gearing up to see the two Moraba teams go head to head for the NSL Champions title. Yana Zoriri with this report. It's Morobe versus Morobe in the grand final playoff for the 2020 Komul Petroleum National Soccer League trophy. Defending champion Lay City FC will go head to head with Vitia United FC, both teams dominated by Morobians. With less than 24 hours to go before the kickoff in Pop Mosby, aside from the players and MTV, another group is also looking forward to the matches the fans. Diehard Lay City fans like UPNG students Charlie Dumavi and his friends have never missed any of their matches since September 23rd, when the no spectator ban was lifted. They are looking forward to see their team playing tomorrow. Now, once squad me, we play ready for tomorrow game. One Sunday, we come up, we play look forward to this. Last week, we play ready to come in. We play so like we've done it before. Lay City making finish, all the grand final finish, and still box him in. Though plenty can get critic, no more come up with social media and a kind, but we are positive that Lay City won't like Simon. No more black cargo back in the place to play. Malin Kisao from Bukawa has never missed a single NSL final. And like all diehard supporters of the game, she flew in from Lay to watch this weekend's matches. I have never missed a NSL grand final since I started watching um, soccer, so I wanted to make it my business that it, I'm going to save up. And when this year NSL grand final, I will still make it to the grand final, so that's why I'm here. While all the excitement will be about football, the students will also be using this opportunity to raise awareness on deep sea tailing in the province. Some people are come up on them, just like thinking to us, province, blue people are missed up, and then it'll just lace you where. Issue of the goal pool or deep sea tailing placement. We all in the lay or local go past the awareness in this law. Now, me blah, lo most people, so me blah, students like UPNC, me blah, staff, and um, me blah, forming a committee that me blah, walk upon the this law, help him all in the lay now. Me blah, walk, walk him this law, walk, blow uh, awareness against him deep sea tailing. So, tomorrow, before me blah, go to support him, uh, soccer law stadium, but me blah, make him awareness, blow no deep sea tailing, but blah. Make him one kind of similar line to lay, make him clean up from UPNZ down to uh, stadium, bomb play, make him clean up on, and then after that clean up on, bomb play, and go stop now, wait, low game, but come up on night, bomb play. So him support bomb play, to play teams, bomb play, bomb play, so. This is where MTV will bring you the live broadcast on game day. MTV's team of producers, commentators, audio operators, and technicians will be based here, relaying back to the station. MTV will broadcast a match live on TV as well as on our Facebook page, MTV Online. Yana Zoriri, National MTV News. Andrew Guy Sports is next. Kilawani is at the sports desk. Thank you, Charmaine. We preview the NSL Grand Final and more news on netball. Join me for the details after the break. Tukai Sports. Right. 
Welcome to Trukai Sports. Emmanuel Simon will lead out an all-star full strength lay city as they meet VTS United in the final of the Kumul Petroleum National Soccer League tomorrow. They take on familiar opponents who are the only side to have beaten lay this season. Yes, Sasa can get this earlier. The back end of the season had been turbulent for Vitiers. Back to back losses before a draw against Ley had seen them in a precarious position a week out from the semi finals. But the last penalty take against Hekari United in last week's semi final, enough to get them through to their maiden grand final appearance. And for VTS, they acknowledged what a season it has been. The boys, you know, that's what we've always wanted, for them to be exposed and to be scouted. And that's, that's our aim at the end of the day, it's for those young boys to be scouted and go make a life for themselves in the professional football world. So happy to hear, actually excited to hear that it's going to be um, seen all over the world. So that's really good for the boys, most definitely. Captain Elliot Fugre, when asked the mood in the camp, had this to say. Not one for words, preferring instead to let his football do the talking. It will make for an interesting battle in the midfield. The entire Hikari team is back defending. Yagi Yasasa. Yasasa goes the rock! Their opposition, however, is a lay side that has been on a roll. Win in favor of Lay City, while on the 8th of August it was a 5-0 victory. While they had a scare in the semi-finals, as the league's top side met a resurgent Gulf Kumar, Lay had always been expected to win. For coach Bob Morris, he feels that that semi-final encounter had been a perfect test for his side. You see the result uh, when it comes to last two, three, three games. But it gave us a, a good challenge, uh, preparation for these uh, finals. I think we, we, we expect uh, what is coming. So. And it will take a moment of pride for Lay's Emmanuel Simon as he enters the pitch as captain in a grand final. Oh yeah, um, it was a great feeling uh, for the first time uh, after being just a player for the, uh, all this uh, career in the uh, NSL. And now being a captain, uh, playing the grand final is a great feeling. To be honest, uh, I'm so proud that I can uh, lead the uh, lead uh, this uh, champion team in this grand final. So I'm very proud of myself and the team overall. They will be missing no players. Few injuries have occurred leading up to the final, and they expect a full bench. Not so Vitius. Manager is Rogan Strack, when asked about key players Elliot Foni and Joshua Tala, had this to say about their injury concerns. In question at the moment, he actually su suffered a very um, severe concussion. Um, we had to get our team doctor that did an assessment on him on Monday, and he hasn't been given the all clear yet. So um, we're still waiting. There's three players that are still on the injury list that has <coughs> dampened the camp a bit, but otherwise, we're looking forward to Saturday's game. It will be the first time that this is a night match in the NSL. It will be the first time that the two meet in a final. And the potential for fireworks cannot be underestimated. Antrika Sports continues with netball and rugby after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Fair representation at national level is a big topic amongst a lot of sporting associations. Koyari Netball, a village-based association, raised this concern in pursuit of seeing one of their own at national level. Koyari Netball Association has raised a concern regarding national representation. Most of the Koyari girls are uh, in, uh, in uh, selection, but all in you know, a put them all out. That's why it's not my name. Meeting, me go and me cross fight one time on. Early affiliation fees for over 15 years have totaled to over 20,000 kina for this rural association. Development of the code seems unattainable due to the lack of funding. 
Despite these challenges, President Yori still wishes to see one of her athletes make the national team. When we raise this concern to Netball PNG, Vice President Yamo Launa's response threw the responsibility back to the affiliated associations. It's the way the associations are developing uh, and focusing on players and the way they manage their respective associations to make sure that they uh, develop uh, their athletes to a certain standard to meet the selection criteria, And I think that every province should do that. Every association should, should do that. Launa said that as a way forward, Netball PNG has prioritized capacity building, especially for technical officials. This means increasing the number of trainers and umpires and creating necessary modules or adaptation of up-to-date international standards and regulations. Local communities will have qualified coaches and umpires to run their tournament. In that way, they will raise their standards. But it falls back to financing and Netball PNG finding the means to support associations. Right now we are uh, negotiating with Australians asking for assistance from there, them to fund the technical capacity building component and uh, development of capacity. With Koyari Netball being an active association for the last 18 years, it would surely tick all criteria as set out by Netball PNG for development purposes. We will be mostly looking at the active associations and where we, we will prioritize where we think there's a need. And 13 months after playing their last test in New Zealand, the All Blacks have named their first side for the season to meet the Wallabies on Sunday. There are nine survivors in the run-on team from the World Cup semi-finals and two key changes in the back line. This weekend should be a landmark moment for the All Blacks with a first cap going to a player born this millennium. 20-year-old Tupo Vai along with loose forward Hoskins Sotutu and winger Caleb Clark in line for debuts off the bench. It shows that we've got faith in our squad and we know this is a year that we're going to need that. If he gets on, Clark and Dad Aroni will be the latest father and son to represent the All Blacks in test matches. Daniel and Gary Braid, the last ones to do so. But it's the squad's newest dad that's caused the biggest selection stir. Bowden Barrett holding on to the 15 jersey from last year's World Cup with Richie Moonga, the form number 10. That is, this team is as is, is new as, as we learn what we want to do. Having two fantastic decision makers on the park is just going to help us. And that means a shift of position for brother Geordie from fullback to the wing. You know he's a form 15. But if you look at some of the games he's played on the wing for us, he's been outstanding. So that's nice of Foz. Um, look, I'm not going to um, fight over it my, with my brother. Um, he's got the jersey and I'm just looking at the things I can do on the wing to help the team hopefully get a win on the weekend. Rico Ioane also won that shifting position, but this one is his choice. Getting the nod alongside Jack Goodhue for his first ever All Black start in the midfield. That was one of our toughest selections in the midfield, to be honest. You've been whinging at me for two years to play. <laughs> <laughs> you were crying last night about the 14 years ago. <laughs> Ioane's shift might be bad luck for Anton Leonard Brown, but Foster says it's just rewards. We still like him on the wing, but he's put forward such a compelling case that he's just, you know, changed our mind. And so good on him. Now, Fozzie's shown a bit of faith, and um, yeah, definitely looking forward to the, the challenge. A challenge almost 12 months in the making. Entrica Sports ends there. The weather forecast with Charmaine after the break. Bye for now. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. Weather forecast for today and this afternoon in the southern region, Port Mosby, Daru, Alotau and Popondeta mostly fine, Kerama cloudy with occasional rain or drizzle. In the Mamasa region, lay partly cloudy, Medang fine, then chance of afternoon showers, we work mostly fine and Vanimo mostly fine, then afternoon showers. 
In the New Guinea Islands, Loringau fine, then chance of afternoon showers. Kaviang mostly fine, though cloudy, then chance of afternoon showers. Kokopo and Rabaul mostly fine, though cloudy. Kimbe occasional rain showers and Buka find and possible afternoon showers. And finally in the Highlands region, all centers are mostly fine, then possible afternoon showers. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. The way it is this Friday, the 9th of October 2020, from all of us here at MTV, have a safe weekend. Good night.